Uh, okay, so let, let's start. Uh, so my name is Shan uh, from Unison of Chicago. Uh, so I'm chairing this very interesting session about experience and practice. Uh, so you will hear three uh, great talks uh, from people from both academia and industry. Um, and so the first talk uh, will be given by Hao Nan. So he is a third year uh, PhD student, uh, and he will be talking about understanding consistency at Facebook. Hello, everyone. I'm Hao Nan Lu from University of Southern California. I'm going to present our recent work that studies what are the benefits of moving Facebook system from eventual consistency to, to, to some stronger consistency models? Welcome to my Facebook homepage. The other day I was searching on the internet to find my girlfriend a birthday gift. And there's an interesting event popped up. It says, the first commenter with a free Oculus Rift. So this is awesome and perfect timing. And it seems no one else has commented yet. So I made a comment. Wow, I was the first one, so I thought I got it. But later, after I refreshed the page, uh, it seems my advisor got it, not me. So this really disappointed me. So when I use Facebook, there are at least two things I care about. First, I want my page to load really fast, which requires a good performance of Facebook system. And also, I don't want to see some strange behaviors like this that requires a consistent view of data. However, there is a fundamental tension in between consistency and performance. You know, stronger consistency can eliminate anomalies, like the Oculus example I just showed. It also makes the system easier to program because the programmers don't have to take care of those corner cases that may cause anomalies. Higher performance usually means lower latency, and higher throughput. Unfortunately, stronger consistency is expensive to implement. So this is why there is a trade-off in between stronger consistency and higher performance. In understanding this trade-off, it's relatively easier to quantify the benefit of higher performance. For instance, it's easy to say that by relaxing consistency, our system can achieve this many operations per second. However, on the other hand, the benefit of stronger consistency has always been difficult to quantify. For instance, it's hard to say that by adopting a stronger form of consistency, how many anomalies our system can eliminate compared to a weakly consistent system. So our work is the first study of consistency in a large-scale production system, which is Facebook Tau system. I have been talking about eliminating anomalies, and now I'm gonna give more concrete examples of what anomalies are. An anomaly is a behavior in a weakly consistent system that often defies user expectations. For instance, in this post example, I made a new post and added my advisor and saying, hey, you should check out this new game. And I call him on WhatsApp and saying, hey, I just mentioned you in a post, and you should take a look. So after the phone call, he tries to read my timeline, but he didn't see the post I just mentioned. The second example is the Oculus example I just showed. So both of us think our own comments is, all, is ordered first, but actually my, my comments is ordered after his comment. So please remember these two examples. Uh, I will call them the post example and the Oculus example, because later, in my later slides, I will show what may cause these anomalies and how our analysis identify these anomalies. So the big question we want to answer is, does Facebook have consistency anomalies? If so, how many anomalies and what type? To answer these questions, we did some analysis on top of Facebook Tau system. So let's start with a simplified version of how Tau works. Tau is an eventually consistent cache system that holds Facebook social graph. It has multiple replicas. And one of the replicas is designated as the master, like the blue one. So all write requests in Tau have to go through this master. For instance, a write request like make a new post is synchronously forwarded to the master and commits at the master database. After it commits, 
the response is sent back along the reverse path. And at the same time, the master's asynchronously replicates this write to all the replicas. The read path in Intel is much simpler. All reads are served locally in each replica. So in this case, my advisor tries to read my timeline when the master is still asynchronously replicating, replicating my post. And the replication has not arrived at replica C yet. So in this case, my advisor will not read my new post. Instead, he will read some stale value, like the old post. So on each update, the tall system as a whole will not be consistent until the replication is eventually applied in all the replicas. And we call this replication time the vulnerability window. That's where anomalies could happen. Now we know anomalies could happen in Tau. In order to know how often anomalies occur, we collect trees of real requests. And we run anomaly checkers on top of the trees to understand what consistency models may prevent those anomalies. For trees collection, we collect trees on web servers. That's where user requests are issued. During the trees collection, because we are dealing with production system, we faced some real world challenges and gained a lot of experience in overcoming those challenges. For instance, the huge volume of user requests and the time scale over the web servers and also the missing entries in the trees. So in this talk, I will briefly talk about the first two challenges. Ideally, we would want to log all user requests, but Tau has billions of operations per second. So logging all of them would put too much overhead to the system and would more than likely interfere with user requests. That's what we want to avoid. So instead, we do the sampling. We sample based on objects. An, objects. an object is a vertex in Facebook social graph. For instance, an object could be a post or social event. Now people may ask, since you are only logging a subset of the requests, would your results still be valid? No, not for all the consistency models. But fortunately, sampling of objects is sufficient for checking consistency models that have the local property. Then what is the local property? The local property means the entire system satisfies property P whenever each individual object satisfies P. So some local consistency models include linearizability, per object sequential, and the read upper write. So if I use the linearizability to rephrase the explanation that at the top it would be the entire system as a whole is linearizable whenever each individual object is linearizable. So this backs up our claim that local consistency models can be checked per object basis. Some non-local consistency models include strict serializability and causal consistency. So even though we cannot directly check for non-local consistency models by sampling on objects, but later slides, I will show how we use our results to infer the benefit of non-local consistency models. Another reward challenge is time scale. So the time scale is the difference between a web service clock and the actual time. And time scale makes our timing of the request inaccurate. This may affect the way we order those requests and may introduce false positives to our results. To handle this challenge, we look into the distribution of time scale on the entire web server fleet over the trace period. We add the maximum of the 99.9 .9 percentile, which is 35 milliseconds, to the duration of each request. So expanding the duration results in more overlapped requests and eliminate false positives. For each request, we log its start time. That's the time when the web server sends this request to the cache tier. And also, we log the finish time. That's the time that the web server received the, uh, the response. And we consider this request commit at some point in between this start time and finish time. And we use these two time fields to determine the real-time order of those requests. 
We also want to know whether this request is a read or write. And we use the value field to match the read with the write that wrote the value. Again, we sample based on objects. Our sampling rate is one out of one million objects. So that means we log all the requests to the, each object in our sample. Our trace spreads over 12 days from August 20th to August 31st, 2015. We have a big trace. It contains 17 million objects and 3 billion requests. Now we have the trace ready to check. We designed anomaly checkers for three consistency models. There are linearizability, per object sequential, and read after write. The reason we chose these three consistency models is that first, again, they are all local consistency mo models. And second, we think they are representative because like linearizability is what Pexos provides, and per object sequential is what Yahoo Peanuts provides, and read after write is what Tau provides within a cluster. So in this talk, I will only cover the linearizability checker. Before talking about the linearizability checker, first thing goes first, what is linearizability? Linearizability is the strongest form of consistency for non-transactional systems. It has two constraints, real-time constraint and total order constraint. Real-time constraint means if I have two operations A and B, if A starts after B finishes, then A should be able to see the effect of B. For instance, in this example, I have some old post, and then I made a new post. After I made a new post, my advisor tries to read my timeline. Because his read request is in real time after my new post, so he should be able to see the post I just made. But in this example, he didn't see it. So it, it violates the real time constraint. The total order constraint means there exists a total order of all the operations in the system. The Oculus example I showed in the very beginning is a violation of total order constraint. I will explain it in detail in later slides. The high level idea of our linearizability checker is that we build a graph when processing the trace one by one. A vertex in the graph is the right operation which represents the system state. An edge shows the order of two operations. So the graph captures state transition of the system. When we have a read request, we merge this read request with the write that wrote the value. So by doing the merge, we capture the user's view of the state transition. If the merge causes a cycle, then it means the user's view of the state transition is different from the system's view. So then this read is a anomaly. Here's how our checker captures the real-time constraint. We build a vertex for the first request, and then we build another request for the second one, and we build another vertex for the second one, and also we build an edge from the first request to the second one, because in, in real time, the post new request is in real time after the post old. And we do the same thing for the third request, which is a read. So now we can see this read request returns the value of the first request. So we merge this read with this write. So now after the merge, we can see there's a cycle. So our checker has captured this anomaly. Here's a more complex example where we have many concurrent operations. I can tell you there are two anomalies in this trace. One wireless real-time constraint and one wireless total order constraint. So I encourage you to check out this link at the top where we have a detailed demo that explains how our checker works. And it also contains a bunch of examples that shows from the simple ones and the complex ones. Now I'm gonna show some results. So in our paper, we have results for all three consistency models we checked, like linearizability per object sequential and read after write. And in this talk, I will only discuss the results for the first two consistency models. In addition, I will discuss how we use our results to infer the benefits of non-local consistency models. 
So one key takeaway is that we found our anomalies for all three consistency models. So this means there exists the benefit of adopting any of those consistency models. For linearizability checker, we found five anomalies per million reads. So this suggests that if we implemented a tau on top of Pexos, that only five per million reads would return a different result. And also, because linearizability is stronger than the other two consistency models we checked, so five per million is the upper bound on tau anomalies. So because of this, we think tau is highly consistent. So now I'm going to show our experience of what may cause linearizability anomalies. So I'm going to show it separately for real-time constraint violations and total order constraint violations. For the total five per million reads, that's an anomaly, four of them are real-time constraint violations. So if you still remember the two examples I showed earlier in the very beginning, the post example is a real-time constraint violation, and the, the Oculus example is a total order constraint violation, which I will be I will be showing it uh, in the next slide. I will use this figure to show how tau serves each request among different replicas. And these timelines are used to show how each request is processed in real time. For instance, I make a new post in replica A. After it commits at the master, we consider this post is up. Then because of the real time constraint of linearizability, all later reads after this point should be able to see this post or later posts. However, because the replication is asynchronous, there is a vulnerability window. So if my advisor reads in replica B during this window, then he will only be able to see my old post because the replication has not arrived at replica B yet. We found one per million reads is a total order constraint violation. So the Oculus example is a total order violation. Say I make a new comment. It commits any master. And the master replicates my comment to the other, rep the other replica. And at the same time, my advisor also makes a comment and follows the same red path as my operation. Now again, because there is a vulnerability window here, so I will only be able to see my own comment and so does my advisor. So we both think our own comment is ordered first, but actually my comment is in the second in the total order, which is the order that these two operations commit at the master. Now I'm going to show some results for per optic sequential. Per optic sequential has two constraints, total order constraint and the user session constraint. The total order constraint is similar to the total order constraint for linearizability. And the user session constraint means a user should be able to see her own rights. We found one anomaly per million reads and one per 10 million reads is user session violation. So in this example, I make a new post to replica A after it's done, I want to check out my own post. But due to some reason, for instance, load balancing, my read request is redirected to replica B. And because the replication has not arrived at replica B yet, so I cannot see the post I just made. So while this happens, it's especially rare, it's only one per 10 million reads. Those were the results for anomaly checker. Again, they are all local consistency models. Now I'm gonna show how we use our results to infer the benefits of non-local consistency models. For instance, causal consistency is stronger than per object sequential. That means per object sequential anomaly is a subset of causal anomaly. So a causally consistent system like plain COPS would eliminate at least all per object sequential anomalies. Because causal consistency is weaker than linearizability, that means 
Linearizable anomaly is a superset of causal anomaly. So Blankhoff's here would eliminate fewer than linearizable anomalies. Because linearizability is not, is not stronger than either strict serializability or causal with transactions, we can only infer the lower bound for the benefits of transactions. So this suggests that from the consistency point of view, in order to maximize the benefits, future research should provide transactions. Fortunately, given there are six papers in SSP this year on distributed transactions, apparently our community is moving towards the right direction. So before concluding this talk, I'd like to mention something that's really interesting, but I, unfortunately, I didn't have time to talk about it in de detail. So one limitation of our anomaly checkers is that they cannot check anomalies in real time because collecting trees and running anomaly checkers on top of trees in real time would be equivalent to implementing a stronger form of consistency on top of tau. However, real-time information is really useful as it allows us to react fast to the inconsistencies. So we design a real-time monitor that tracks fee consistency, which is a new metric that measures how well tau replicas converge. Unfortunately, I don't have time to go over this part of our work in detail, but it's the, the, the real-time monitor is a lightweight early warning tool that has been deployed at Facebook since 2012. So in order to learn more, please check out our paper or ask me questions in a minute or just like talk to us in the poster section. Now I'm going to conclude my talk. So I began this talk by describing the fundamental tension in between consistency and performance. Our work illuminates this trade-off with the first study of the benefits of adopting stronger consistency for a large-scale production system. In our study, we measured the Facebook tile system by collecting a trace from the web servers and then running graph-based anomaly checkers on top of the trace. We gained a lot of experience in overcoming some real-world challenges like the huge volume of requests and time scale on the web servers. The results of our study include that tau is highly consistent because only five reads out of a million would return different results with a Pexos-based implementation. On the other hand, we found anomalies for all consistency models we studied. This means adopting them would have benefits. And finally, from the consistency point of view, sorry. So finally, uh, from the consistency point of view, in order to maximize the benefits, future research should provide transactions. Thank you, that's all I have. Hi, Atul Adya, Google. So based on your results, are you concluding that we should only have strong consistency, or are you saying uh, we can build systems with weak consistency? What is, uh, and what is your recommendation if you want to continue with weak consistency, since Facebook has successfully built all these systems? Uh, I, I believe the question is, uh, what's our conclusion, just like after our analysis, right? So I think uh, the conclusion is two. The conclusion is twofold. Uh, the first thing is uh, we conclude that the tau system because we, we we did analysis on top of tau, right? So we conclude that tau as a eventually consistent system is highly consistent, right? But also on the other hand, we found anomalies for all the consistency models we studied. So that that means there exists benefit from the consistency point of view that he, that if we do, adopt any of those consistency mo models. But would you recommend sort of moving tau to, high, to strong consistency and not building more weakly consistent system? I'm just curious about your recommendation and your experience. Uh, personally, I don't have any recommendations here uh, okay. because that's not the type of questions I could answer, so I don't Fair know. enough, Thanks. thank you. <laughs> hello, hello. Um, Terrence hey. Kelly, HP Labs. 
The way you deal with time skew admits false negatives, is that correct? Uh, it eliminates false positives. But false negatives are possible. Uh, the, false positive, uh, the, false positive is, the false negative is possible, yes. Right. So in other words, the paper reports that inconsistencies are prevalent to the extent of epsilon or some greater number. And uh, my question for you is, is this a positive result or a negative result or simply inconclusive? Uh, actually, it is a good question. So uh, in our paper, we also just like did the time scale thing the other way. So now, just like uh, I described in my talk, I expand, uh, we expand the request, right? And in our paper, we also show that if, well, what, uh, what if we just like shrink the, 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 the request by the time scale? Then in that case, the result is actually the, uh, the upper bound on the number of anomalies. But that's in our paper, so please Got read it. off paper for that. Got it. Okay, thanks. Uh, hi, uh, my name is Steve Lee uh, from Google. Uh, to my knowledge, there are a few uh, linearability, linearizability checking algorithms in the literature already. One of them is Misra's algorithm in 86 uh, TOPLUS. Another one is uh, Gibbons and Korach in 98 SciComm. Uh, your algorithm actually looks very, very similar to Misra's algorithm. Uh, um, I can questions? send you those papers if, offline uh, if you want. I see. Yeah, we, we cited those papers, and we didn't claim our algorithm for, for checkers are not novel. Uh, so I think the one big contribution of this work is this is the first study of consistency in a large-scale production sy system. I think the, the word first itself is a contribution. And also, uh, we just like, uh, and also for, we, we faced a lot of just like real world challenges, right? So the, the experience in just like overcoming them is, is I think, is very valuable. For, for, for instance, for those checkers, just like we overcome some challenges like uh, the very complex APIs uh, in Tau, like in Facebook Tau. I don't think any of those uh, algorithms you mentioned, they just like typically take care of this case. Uh, no, those algorithms are just algorithms, and in fact, I think Gibbons and Courage algorithm might be uh, more efficient and easier to implement. I see. Thanks. Okay, so um, Ken Berman, uh, I'm, I'm puzzled about something kind of different. The Tau paper argues that they should relax consistency not because they expect routine problems, but because sometimes uh, there'll be uh, extreme situations and trying to recover from those would be very costly. But you didn't make any effort to look at extreme situations, even though when uh, Chi Huang did the study of Facebook caching, it turned out that we could have looked at extreme situations. You could tell when Facebook is going to shut a data center down and move to another one because they schedule these things. Why didn't you look specifically at consistency during failover events of this kind? Because it is possible at Facebook, and you were inside Facebook. Uh... I believe that's a interesting direction to continue to work on. And uh, yeah, so we didn't look into that situation in this work, but I think that's quite interesting for future works. Thanks. Malte Schwarzkopf, Cambridge and MIT. Um, so this is not a nice uh, study, but I be, I'd be interested in your take on, on the outcomes. Like, you know, in the, you've got five requests in a million that our anomalies, um, and you know, if this was a bank, then that would be quite bad. Um, but you probably wouldn't build a bank on an eventually consistent system to begin with. Given that it's Facebook, and you know, the consequences tend to be somewhat less disastrous if two of my posts are reordered in the uh, in the timeline. Do you think you know? You say we should build on transactions. Do you think the performance hit that will necessarily come with that? Is worth it, you know. Five in a, in a million, you know. How many users does that affect, right? You know, if you display me my timeline, that obviously involves many, many requests. But do you have any data on how many actual user interactions are are affected? Uh, no, no, we didn't do that in our work. Uh, but I think that's definitely. I think that's that's one takeaway. But I didn't show in this talk, just like because we showed how it's highly consistent. We only identified a very small number of uh, anomalies, right? So we think so. If we were going to just like implement a stronger form of consistency system, then it should be very low overhead to to compensate the cost. 
and the, just like for your question on the transaction thing. So we are proposing this uh, from the consistency point of view. So only focusing on consistency, we suggesting the future research to maximize the benefit they should provide transactions. And yeah, sure, so strong, just stronger consistency as well as transactions, they have cost. So then, yeah, that definitely should be. And I, I suppose that cost is worthwhile only if there's actually you know, an impact on, uh, for, for the user, right? Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know, in, in Facebook's case, it's not entirely clear if, if the impact is huge. Do, do, mm -hmm. yeah. did, uh, I, I suppose your trace didn't give you information about what specifically the impact was in, each, in the case of each anomaly. Yeah, I think it's an interesting topic. So I think let's take this offline and maybe talk to us okay, in the sure. session, which is tonight. Thanks.